it's metagosis perfectionatus where medicine makes perfect sense let's continue our biology playlist in the last videos we talked about digestion in the stomach and in the intestine today we will turn our attention to the pancreas particularly the exocrine pancreas which is made of an acinus and a duct what are we secreting hormones shut up we're secreting digestive enzymes Okay, metacosis, I would love to digest some carbohydrates. Sure, the pancreas will produce pancreatic amylase enzyme to digest carbohydrates. All right, then, I would like to digest lipids or fat. The pancreas will make the following lipase, colipase, cholesterol esterase, and phospholipase. How about some proteins, then? The pancreas is going to make trepsin and carboxypeptidase. This is my biology playlist, please watch these videos in order. Let's start by answering the question of the previous video. I ask you, why did we call the duodenum duodenum, even though the word duodenum means 12? Easy medicosis, because the duodenum measures 12 inches. Ah, uh, not quite, it's about 10 inches. Oh, then it's because it's 12 centimeters. Also not true, it is 25 centimeters. Um, maybe because it has like this kind of a curve, which is similar to that too. Dude, who are you, a freaking deconstructionist? No, they called it duodenum indeed, because it measures 12 fingers in length. Because when the surgeon is working, and I wanna see where the duodenum starts and it ends, you measure the space from here to here, using your fingers, so first finger, second finger, third finger, lump together near each other in series, and you'll find that the duodenum measures 12 fingers. Do you think the freaking surgeon uses a measuring tape while doing the operation? No, we're not gonna be done. I can use the measuring tape to measure the size of a tumor if I found it, but not every time I'm gonna operate, I'm gonna me use a measuring tape. I use my fingers, it's way faster and more efficient. Let's answer the next question. I've told you that iron is absorbed in the duodenum, folate is in the jejunum, and cobalamin or vitamin B12 is in the terminal ileum. And my question was, does the stomach absorb anything? And the answer is yes, but very, very little. Teeny tiny amounts of alcohol and aspirin. Why these two doofuses in particular? Because they are highly lipid soluble. And as you know, the membrane, any cell membrane in your body, including the membrane of the stomach, is made of what? Lipid by layer. So if you are lipid, you can diffuse through lipid like a sharp knife through warm butter. Ready for some integration? The same two doofuses, alcohol and aspirin, can cause hyperthermia. Why? Because they are uncouplers of the mitochondrial oxidative dephosphorylation. Because if you remember, the light bulb emits light and some heat. Oh yeah, the more efficient the light bulb, the less heat it emits. That makes sense. But if I'm intoxicated, my mitochondria is less efficient to the point that is no longer making energy, no ATP. Its only job now is to make heat. Oh, that's a useless mitochondria. Exactly, because it's a toxicity. Hey doctor, every time I sit down on a chair, I feel something burning underneath my gluteus maximus. What's that? Well, you're either an alcoholic or an aspirin intoxicated individual. But of course I need more evidence. We talked about this gazillion times before. Glands are endocrine or exocrine? Exocrine, have duct. Endocrine, no duct. Exocrine, I'll secrete my secretions, usually enzymes, into those ducts, which will take me to a nearby structure. Example, the exocrine pancreas secreting its digestive enzymes into a nearby duodenum. Conversely, endocrine, no ducts, I'll dump my hormones into the bloodstream, which is gonna take me to distant places. Example is the endocrine pancreas secreting its insulin directly to the bloodstream and you will find insulin all over the body, including in your fingertip. And this is the idea behind the finger prick glucose test. Why do we need those enzymes? Digestion and coming down the road, absorption. Enzymes can come out of the alimentary canal itself or they can come from accessory glands which lie outside the GI tract, which includes salivary glands, the pancreas, especially the exocrine pancreas, liver and gallbladder. Pancreas, as you know, is mostly exocrine, but we have teeny tiny amounts in the body and tail which are endocrine. Today we're talking about the exocrine pancreas, which needs a pancreatic duct. In the next video, we'll talk about the endocrine pancreas, 
where we dump our insulin, glucagon, somatostatin directly into the bloodstream. Pancreas, exocrine and endocrine. Exocrine needs a duct. It's known as the pancreatic duct. And we will give our secretions, enzymes, to the duodenum. All right, give me examples of these digestive enzymes from the pancreas. Amylase, for carbohydrate. Lipase, colipase, cholesterol esterase, phosphodiesterase, for lipid digestion trypsinogen and carboxypeptidase for protein digestion. How about the endocrine pancreas? Islets of Langerhans found mainly in the body and tail. No duct, we dump our hormones into the bloodstream and these hormones include glucagon, insulin and somatostatin. Glucagon from the alpha cells of the pancreas, insulin is secreted by the beta cells, somatostatin is from the delta cells. What's the job of glucagon? To raise sugar in the blood. This is the fasting state. Insulin is to lower glucose in the blood. This is the feeding state. By taking the glucose away from the blood and put it into your cell for your own metabolism. And somatostatin is a doofus by the delta cell. It's a universal inhibitor. Which one do you think is the most important? Of course, insulin. That's why the beta cells is central anatomically and metaphorically. But today we're talking about the exocrine pancreas, so let's focus more on this. I want to digest carbohydrate, go with amylase. I want to digest lipids, lipase, colipase, cholesterol esterase, and phospholipase. I want to digest some proteins. You have trypsin, chymotrypsin, some proteases, and carboxypeptidase. Exocrine pancreas has a duct, and who's going to secrete into that duct a lovely acinus. The acinus secretes enzymes. The duct secretes water and bicarbonate. How does the duct secrete? I thought that it was just a tube. No, it's not just an empty tube. It is made of actually cells. It's lined by endothelium, which can secrete. If you want the acinus to secrete enzymes, talk to CCK. If you want your duct to secrete water and bicarb, talk to secretin, as we have discussed before. Do you remember secretin? Yeah, it came from the S cells in the upper part of small intestine and it goes to the pancreatic duct cells to tell them to secrete water and bicarb to neutralize the acidity, the huge amount of hydrochloric acid being dumped over the duodenum by the stomach. And now the duodenal enzymes can work in their alkaline pH as usual. Cholecystokinin pancreasimin, or CCK, comes from the eye cells in the upper part of small intestine. Acts upon, not the duct cells, but the acinar cells of the exocrine pancreas. To secrete what? Digestive enzymes, such as trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, procarboxypeptidase, proteases, amylase, lipase, colipase, phospholipase, cholesterol esterase. Yes, indeed. And they will go to the duodenum because we are exocrine, baby. We go to a nearby local location and not to a distant destination. Somatostatin is a hormone. This is endocrine pancreas. It also comes from the upper part of small intestine and from the stomach as well. Somatostatin is a universal inhibitor. It's a doofus from the delta cell. It inhibits everything. It even inhibits its own secretion. Remember when we talked about this in the last video? Yeah, small intestine functions, mechanical functions, motility, chemical functions, secretions, and we secreted enzymes and hormones. Let's focus more on the enzymes now. Enzymes that come not from the pancreas, but from the duodenum. Maltase and isomaltase for carbohydrate, lactase also for carbohydrate digestion, and sucrase as well. For protein digestion, we have aminopeptidase and enteropeptidase. Do you remember what did aminopeptidase do? It converted peptides into amino acids. Oh, some digestion action, some breakdown function. True. How about enteropeptidase? Same action, same function, plus activating trypsinogen, which comes from the exocrine pancreas, into trypsin, and activating procarboxypeptidase, which also comes from the exocrine pancreas, into carboxypeptidase. So here's the pancreas secretes inactive trypsinogen and inactive procarboxypeptidase. I cannot secrete them as active from the beginning because they will digest the pancreas itself. That'll be crazy. We gotta wait until we reach the lumen of the duodenum. The duodenum will secrete enteropeptidase which converts the inactive trypsinogen into the active trypsin and the inactive procarboxypeptidase into the more active carboxypeptidase. Take that active trypsin and active carboxypeptidase in the duodenum and you get all kinds of protein digestion. Thank you so much, pancreas, for helping me digest proteins.
But wait, we're just getting started. I can also help you digest lipids or fat. Because I secrete lipase and colipase and phospholipase and cholesterol esterase, all of them in the duodenum are going to help you digest fat from big molecules into smaller molecules. The big molecule is the triglycerides. Smaller molecules include free fatty acids and glycerides. But wait, there is more. The pancreas can also help you digest carbohydrates because it secretes pancreatic amylase, not to be confused with the salivary amylase known as tealin. My lovely amylase is gonna help break down the big carbs, starch from plants or glycogen from animals into maltose and dextrin. Who's gonna break down maltose next? Maltase from the intestine, not from the pancreas. And you'll break down maltose into glucose and glucose as we have discussed before. Some clinical correlations. If I have pancreatic insufficiency, what do you think will happen? Well, since the normal function of the pancreas is to digest, I will suffer from indigestion. And if I cannot digest, you can bet the rent money that I will not be able to absorb. No digestion, no absorption. Like the used car salesman, no cash, no problem. Now the patient cannot absorb proteins or carbohydrates or fat. All of these are horrible, especially fat. Why? Because not only you're losing the fat, you're also losing the fat-soluble vitamins, which include KEDA, vitamin K, vitamin E, vitamin D, and vitamin A. When you get vitamin K deficiency, you bleed because the normal function of vitamin K was to cause clots. When you cannot coagulate, you will bleed. Next, vitamin E is a lovely antioxidant. It helps with red blood cells, maturation, some nervous system metabolism. And that's why if I have vitamin E deficiency, what do I get? Anemia with these funny looking cells on the peripheral smear. I can also get peripheral neuropathy. And since nerves talk to muscles, I also get myopathy as well as spinal cord problems. Next, I lost vitamin D. I get bone problems. If I'm a child, rickets. If I'm older, osteomalacia. How about vitamin A deficiency? I can get night blindness. Remember the good old days which were not so good when your mom always kept telling you, hey, you better eat your carrots. They are good for your vision. She was not lying to you because vitamin A deficiency causes visual symptoms, especially at night. As you know, vitamins are vital amines. That's why we call them vitamins. Aminocosis are the actually, really, vital amines? No, it's a wrong name. And they are essential micronutrients. What does essential mean? Your body cannot make them, therefore you have to consume them in your diet, or at least take supplements. We divide vitamins into water-soluble vitamins and fat-soluble vitamins. Water-soluble are B and C, fat-soluble are KEDA. In order for you to absorb a fat-soluble vitamin, such as vitamin K, E, D, or A, you need three organs to be healthy. Organ number one, liver and biliary system. Organ number two, the pancreas. Organ number three, the intestine, which will do the actual absorption. Okay, medicosis, uh, I get why we need an intestine, but why do I need the liver and a pancreas? Remember the function of CCK, cholecystokine and pancreozymin. Why? To help us digest nutrients, especially fat. You need bile to emulsify the fat. You need pancreatic lipase, colipase, etc. to also digest the fat. Therefore, can you mention causes of vitamin K deficiency? Sure, it's either you're not consuming it or you're consuming something that interferes with it or you have a liver disease, biliary disease, pancreatic insufficiency or gut problem. Could be sterility of the normal flora, the normal bacteria, the microbiome living in your gut, such as prolonged use of antibiotics. Or maybe you have celiac disease, which is an autoimmune disease. You have nasty autoantibodies flattening the villi of your small intestine. Or you could be taking medications that interfere with the ability of the liver to deal with vitamin K. Or you could have cirrhosis of the liver, because remember, fat-soluble vitamins are normally stored in the liver. Now pause and review. If you want to be an excellent student, 
bring out a piece of paper and write everything here down using your own handwriting. You will remember it better and you will thank me later. If you would like to know about the pharmacology for the gastrointestinal system, I have an Utacoids pharmacology course to teach you about H2 blockers, proton pump inhibitors, and others, including serotonin, histamine, all kinds of Utacoids and eicosanoids. I also have a kidney physiology course on my website. And speaking of the stomach acid and the alkaline tide, I have an acid-base imbalance course on my website, medicosisperfectionalist.com. You can download it today. And you do it once, you keep it for you forever. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalist, where medicine makes perfect sense.